Grow the fuck up. East End actors are not your friends. Um, <laughs> okay, that was a bit bad. But uh, you get Pretty what I good. mean. Pretty uh, that, good. That's a that is a snappy introduction. Like, um, I will give an example. I will give a great example. I used to be a big fan of a podcast called Old School Wrestling, OSW. Ash would know about this. It's an embarrassing yeah. time in my life. Um, and there used to be a, one of the people, one of the YouTubers used to live in my town. And I used to, I used to be like, oh, look at him, look at him. I, I, I try and say hello to him and stuff like that. And I'm honestly like, it's a bit weird because I'm like a teenager and he's like a 30 year old man. So it's like, <laughs> why am I trying to be friends with him? And then obviously, like, I got friends with like the other host on it. And then we sort of like had the differences. Like the, and the people have directly told me they're not your friends. And I, I know. And then obviously, I've, I've, oh, 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 fuck, hold on. Um, and then obviously. And then obviously, like, I, I've i now grown to appreciate the fact that there's two different people. There's people that present themselves on camera. So, like, me and I, yeah. how we present ourselves on camera. And then us in person. We're different in person than we are online. Well, as for the most part is. I mean, I'm, I'm full of beans online. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm dialing up myself to about 10, but I'm dialing myself up to about 10. Some I I go days without talking sometimes. Like, <laughs> like, like he like again, the problem like, where you lie is you have to respect boundaries. If you don't respect yeah. boundaries, you're stepping over the line a little bit. It's all about um teaching yourself how to respect these boundaries. Obviously, yeah. if you're a fan of an actor, uh, that's fine. Uh, we all love an actor. Nick Frost, I love him. He's a great actor. Uh, I met him at Comic Con. I was so weirded out. A big bloke in real life. I was fucking shitting myself when I saw him. Like massive hands. Like fucking went up to him, and he went, "You want an autograph, man?" Yeah. And then my dad's obviously there. Going, <laughs> then, then, then my dad's obviously beside me, nudging me, going, "Hey, hey, hey, Frost. How's how's clothesline? How's clothesline going? How's peg going?" Ha ha ha. And obviously he's just sat there like, "Who's this address there?" Thanks for the fifty quid. <laughs> Piggy. <laughs> just... <laughs> but yeah, like I've no problem with. But yeah, now. boundaries, of course. Yeah. I think that there's also a difference because with soaps, obviously, it's a long running, it's a long running show. I've been a fan of EastEnders, like on and off for de- for like a decade. But like I've been into it properly since 2018. That's what six years of my life that I've spent watching some of these characters grow up. And develop, and if these characters somewhat parallel you, you know, if you're gay and you see yourself in some of these queer characters, you know, maybe you feel a bit more of an affinity for them. You kind of get a bit attached to them. You know, if they have a relationship that you really love, you may get a really like a big sense of like love for the character. And some people, in my opinion, and just like this thread suggests, some people do go a little bit too far. There's like not... you need to respect these boundaries because they are they are actors doing their fucking job. <laughs> you know, once they go home, they aren't they aren't fucking Phil Mitchell. They're Steve McFadden. They're... Like I have... simply saying, you need to respect that they are people outside the show because it's been a thing recently where, as this thread will allude to, people do hang outside the fucking. They do hang out the studios. They desperately it's one thing i've never understood because like there was a bit there was an episode there was a bit of doctor who that was filmed like close to me and then there was a bunch of people like hanging outside of this cordoned off area like hoping they'll see like a fucking scrap of like nshuti or like millie gibson and it's like guys what like what why why do you need this why is this important to you again i have another great comparison Obviously, last year I was at Wembley watching All Elite Wrestling all in 2023. And obviously, I met some people after outside the show. Um, they were standing outside the hotel, like, shoving cameras in people. Well, I don't want to say shoving, but they were trying to get, like, autographs from the wrestlers yeah. and all that. And, like, I know I was technically a part of that, but I was like, I'm not getting involved with that. Like, I'd say hello, but I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved because I hate that. And obviously, they're like, hello. They're like, they're like doing this, but they're like, Hello, can you say hello to the camera? Say hello, say hello, say hello, hello, hello. Like, and it's like, fuck off. They've just wrestled a 20-minute match. Will you fuck <laughs> off? 
understand. Yes. I understand. Like, I mean, just imagine it. The imagine it this way, right? Imagine like I, I don't know why I'm going to use us as an example, but like even sometimes we do this where I'll fu I'll stream on my own channel for like three hours and Piggy will be like, oh, oh fucking have you seen this? And I'm I'm sat there like fucking oh what what the fuck I've, I've just streamed for like three hours mate i don't fucking care about any of this shit please leave me alone <laughs> like yeah and these are actors doing a full fucking day of work and a lot of these actors they're not doing like six hours a day they're doing like 12 to 15 hour days it's... soap schedules are mental they're doing these long ass days and that and the second they're like all right sick i'm in my car i'm going home time to just whoa back to being me ah uh, hello can we take a picture no i'm going home fuck off leave me alone i'm not fucking why do i have to deal with your shit um i will say again that like there is people that take it too far again on mac wrestling there's obviously one thing i i absolutely despise in wrestling is obviously the wrestlers have to fly where they're going obviously or drive obviously you have these people who might run into them at the airport, so you might be like me, just go, oh, hello, see you, punk, hello. You know, you won't say anything <laughs> to them, you'll just, like, wave and go, I'm a big fan of you. But you won't go near them, because you're scared shitless, because that's what you should do. But think of the people coming up to them, going, hello, hello, how are you? Hello, can you sign this? Can you sign this? Can you sign this? And it's like, may, I f may, may, I literally... And, and then they so, no. Can you sign this? Can you sign this? Can you please sign this? My kid's dying. My kid's dying. Can you sign it? You don't have a kid. You're You're 14. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. One day he will die, and you he'll know that you didn't sign his fucking autograph. And it's like, because uh. I always <laughs> like, again, again for Wembley this year in twenty twenty four, I met Tom Campbell, the face of North Wrestling, and he's also a YouTuber on CultaholicWrestling dot com. Obviously, he was filming something in the Wembley area, and I obviously seen yeah. him. And I have no problem with people going up taking photos because he's too lovely. Like that's the problem with Tom Campbell. Anyone will tell you he's too lovely. Like, I literally, you could be like, I'm going to stab you. And he'd be like, go on, try. <laughs> he's just, he's so lovely, like. um, And he was like, everyone's coming up going, hello, photos, photos, can we take photos? And he's like, mate, I have to get back to work. I walk away, just shake his hand. I'm like, I love your work, see you, mate. He's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> like, in comparison to everyone coming up taking photos with him, I feel like that's the same you should do with an actor. If you see them on the street, just say hello to them, leave them alone. Um, yeah. You should have boundaries. The only time you should meet them is if you accidentally bump into them on the street, which some people might do. Right. Even if he, if they're in a pub, you know, if they're in a pub, yeah. you know, if they're just having a drink by themselves, maybe be like, hey, you know, fucking... Big fan of you. I, I, I'm a big fan. Now let me buy you a drink. I'm not going to bother you, but here's a fucking, here's a pint. If they're with a family, don't fuck with a family time. <laughs> it's, like... It, it, you know, d d would you want to be interrupted whilst you were having a meal with your family and just like, oh, I'm a big fan of you. Yeah, great. Do you not see I'm fucking busy here? <laughs> um, obviously, I also say if they're doing conventions, like if they're at conventions, that's a perfect way to meet them because then there is still a boundary. I mean, I mean they're, they're paid to be there and they're yeah. making money. So exactly. they are being paid to tolerate you. Or, or a cameo, I guess. You could pay for a cameo. Like, um, because there's two examples I have. It's like when Theo Hawthorne was, um, it's like when the actor who plays Theo Hawthorne was, like, gone on a flight or something. And I know these lads are messing with him, but, but they obviously see him in EastEnders, and I think they start calling him a pedophile. And I'm like, they, they started chanting something at him late to the show, like, and I'm like, and then obviously... That's, an, not, that's not on. And then there's obviously another example, and I, this one made me cringe so hard, and I rarely say that word. So there's this guy, and he's obviously filming. He's filming like this. And behind him is Steve McFadden, right? So obviously, you're supposed to say, oh, you're Phil Mitchell, right? He goes up to him. Steve McFadden now is, so is this, he's behind me. So he's going, hey, hey, Steve, hey, it's Phil, 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 how's Ben? How's Ben? And he's just there like... Fuck off. <laughs> Generally, it pissed me off. I need to find it. It's so sad, because he's just standing there. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And this happened like a few years ago, and he's just like, "How's Ben? How's Ben?" And obviously, you can just tell Steve wanted to punch him. <laughs> just like, leave me alone. But yeah, I suppose just just to wrap this around though, though, I think it's a.
it's 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 spurred on by bits of a toxic fan base who want to believe that they are more overly familiar with the characters than they actually are. Like, I'm perfectly happy. You can call actors by their names, sure. I don't really think you need to personally, unless you are genuinely like, all right, great performance from this person. But some people are just like, ah, I love what our Hev and our Bal are doing. It's like you don't know them though. Like just because you like their their ship in a fucking show, I I I don't think you should. But yeah, sure, it's fine. But like even someone in the thread goes, why do you have to call her Bal? Just fucking just say her name. You 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 you're not you're not just gonna fucking meet her. You like. How many times a day are you actually mentioning the actress who plays Suki Panasar? <laughs> and like, you know, this is this is fine. This isn't uh, this isn't that toxic though. Like, yeah, sure, you might be a bit over familiar, but it is when you start like fucking tagging them and all your like fucking. I love you guys. I love Suki and Eve. I, it's, I mean, I'm taking Suki and Eve as an example. It happens with all the fucking ships, but it also happens to be with a lot of the ships that are like gay or queer like the max bowden fucking fandom is incredibly toxic and because the actor was like taken off the show now there's just a group of people who are just like ah, oh, wow fucking shit show i miss when they got rid of the favorite character the best character they've ever had and it's like guys you're actively damaging the fucking you're damaging this reputation you're you're tainting it i will obviously now read the thread um, well, we might make this a bit of a long video going through comments and stuff because this is generally a topic that always interests me because I like to see where people stand because some people don't have a problem with it but other people I, I say it's about 70-30 but 30% people don't have a problem with it about 70% have a problem with it because there's I mean, all... I'm, I'm equally a person who I like having boundaries with things like I mean even even when we started doing watching Wolford and we weren't too familiar it was like you 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 you'd message me constantly and I'm like just just talk to me about the fucking East Enders please you messaging me like five times a day every day I don't have anything to say please leave me alone <laughs> um... and then obviously through time fucking just mates now so fucking oh I'll just. I like boundaries, essentially. The people who I also are... don't need to know the fucking... I don't need to know the actors behind the fucking role. I like the role. I like the character. I don't need to know who the fuck they are as a person. It's, it's like... It's, it's like... <laughs> it's like the other day, one of the players on my team, uh, I... They, they showed up on X. They showed up on Twitter, and I'm like... I don't like to like seek out these people's tweets because they are footballers and they're fucking idiots. And then this footballer is like tweeting shit from like Farage and like Tommy Robinson. I'm like, oh fucking hell, oh god, no, why, why have my, why has my idea of this player in my head been fucking besmirched by his shit opinions? Um, I'll obviously now read the the thread. The people who have a parasocial relationship with the cast of East Ham. Um, in brackets, hanging outside the studio gates, referring to them by the first name only, or nicknames on the social media, etc. Uh, close bracket, are really odd. Absolutely the most toxic thing about watching a show from the year of World War 2024 is some of the weirdos, weirdos that it attracts. I'm genuinely um, flummox, flum, flummoxed? Flummox, yeah. Just flummoxed. kind of, yeah, startled, surprised. Uh, at the folk who hang around outside the s Truth Studios, the yell and holler at the passing cars. Let people go to and from work in peace. It's shocking that the BBC haven't put an end to this behaviour. Crowds have grown at those acting like the women for the parade at Disneyland, but it's actually the women who play the woman who plays Big Mo coming to the start of the ship while sat in a Ford Fiesta. And this equally The big... one thing that buckles me is there's there's obviously been a recent picture of the guy who plays Junior. And you just see him, he's smiling, but he's dead inside in this picture, because it's just like it's just fully like, I don't want to be here. It's hilarious. And then there's the equally weird stuff online. And I've been poor for Finder so bad. I haven't been famous long. And we've got strangers on the internet posting long, long lens paparazzi shots of you smiling to your colleagues on our location shoot. Captioning them classic bad. As if you're mates of, uh, as if you're the mates of old. How sincere they uh, offer familiar. Uh, it'd be enough to make me want to leave the house again. Uh, not the, not the not. again. 
There's a even a girl on Instagram who pretends to be Max Bowden's wife and the mother of his five children called the police. It's the TV program. <laughs> I agree. Um, the quote, yes. of, the quote of a, a famous, uh, famous news writer Dave Meltzer: "Go to the beach." Exactly. Um. Yeah. Keep I, going. We've 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 spoken a lot about this, so. I'll just read on. I live near the studios. Unfortunately, the BBC have done all they can to deter people from doing this. There's a sign that asks people not to loiter. Probably because it's a public residential street, there's no way to enforce it. The cast have been asked numerous times not to stop, and some don't. Other, however, I think are just incredibly calm. We'll stop for a couple of minutes if they have time. I agree wholeheartedly that there is a huge problem with people online and parasocial relationship. One of the reasons why I left Twitter was because it made me incredibly uncomfortable. One lady I, uh, I recall would go continuously in the hopes of seeing Max Bowen. Why a lot of these people who, uh, who visit the set have disabilities? I mean, the cast seems a lot. Others, on the other hand, take away too far. There was an old man. There was an old man called Security P who terrorised the place. The uh, place. There's a man who goes now who is notorious on TikTok for making the cast on, uh, incredibly uncomfortable. Some fans from Instagram have been known to try and befriend family members of the cast and ask about filming sketches. Okay, that's okay. Okay, that then. That's um, fucked up. That's fucked up. Um, at the recent tele- national television's award. Uh, East Dennis had to organise increased security because they were worried about a stalker problem. Someone was arrested outside the studios recently for displaying inappropriate behaviour. Life was so much simpler before everything was available online. That is true in a, se- in a sense as well because online has really... Because you can get groups of people now all negotiating what to do. Um, yeah, but I suppose likewise it's one thing where it's also, in a sense, they would have to go ahead and... Uh... Like, you know, you, you would have to actively organize this. <laughs> you would actually have to organize this. Um, and it feels like it wouldn't have been. Uh, yeah, it's just it's one of those weird things where because it's in a sense, it does have a barrier, though, because most people are just terminally online and they're not actually going to get in your shit. So but it, it kind of goes both ways. Uh, thanks for the insightful comment. No problem, Ron. I think the only way they can change is if the residents themselves make official complaints to the council and uh, take action and pass the road access. Also, live near the studios and all the cast do to be nice, but they need to stop as it encourages this behaviour. There needs to be a blanket policy from BBC regarding this. It's also harmful for the local residents that crowds of people outside doing this. Perhaps the BBC needs to stop allowing the cast to go straight to the studios themselves and arrange some sort of shuttle bus service for them. Brought to someone by near nearby but non residential place, such as the industrial park cafe, down a shuttle bus from BBC which has a blackened window and drives directly into the studio set. By a lot of them who visit the set of disabilities and meet the cast means a lot to them. How does something mean that's not the cast problem? I've worked with special needs people before and they learn right from wrong. If taught in a adapted way, stalking PB actors of the workplace is not okay. Carers are enabling this behaviour and they should know better. Maybe East Enders would benefit from doing what can they be. Does set tours for the public, including on some occasions a celebrity tour set. Exchanges should consider this and charging the public allows allows them to raise money for more BBC projects. Yeah, I suppose we don't need to don't need to read this next like thread of comments. It's just people arguing about autism and how they can you know right from wrong, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, uh. Yeah, it would be a good idea to do some form of cast tours, but you do run a risk of people fucking off. You know, you do run a risk of people, like, trying to fucking hide and trying to fucking find themselves at different places of the set. And with how hectic the schedule is, you can't exactly open it up to the public very often because you don't want to reveal any secrets or you don't want any... You know, don't uh, see any uncompromising pictures of actors, or it's a hard thing to do. Like, I do think it'll be a cool thing to have. To like, I'd fucking. It's one of those things where if I were to see the set, I don't, I don't want to see the, I don't want to see like the houses that aren't real. You know, like let, yeah, sure. Let me be in the Queen Vic. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. Let me be in like the fucking garden where with the sign. That's cool. I, I don't, I don't want to see the sets. You know, it takes away, it makes it, it makes it less real to me. And I prefer it all in its own. Like I said, so why you, I why I generally talk about all the characters rather than the actors. I prefer it to be consistently like 
I am engaging with what's being told to me. I'm not like going outside of my way to fucking try and be a part of like like yeah sure we do a podcast about eastenders i'm not angling that i want to become a part of the fucking show <laughs> like i'm just a fan i just like the show <laughs> but yeah um well, yeah think... just scroll down a I'll little just, bit i'll just read a bit more i say crowds of people how many are you talking about and is it a daily occurrence i'm an exact figure but enough from a neighborhood news and I mean, I do feel sorry for the local neighbourhood. So imagine, imagine, because you could all, I don't want to, I don't want to encourage any behaviour, but I know some people would try and go out of their way to befriend the local community so they could try and arrange it to stay a night and fucking then, oh, studio, oh. Um, one lady I recall were constantly going the hopes of seeing Max Bowden. I remember being there at least one Max Bowden obsessive on uh, the E Twitter. I assume, it, I assume it's Twitter, yeah. I think he ended up calling her out and she became a hater. A lot of his stuff, the delusion is strong with some people. Um, I think there was one who was completely obsessed with Scott Madison too. Uh, unless that was legit his missus a lot. Um, um, one thing... what The one kind of like funny... But, oh, is it frozen? I'm, I'm back, I'm back. Um, is fucking Edward Patterson, who obviously played, you know, Cedric in Harry Potter, Edward, Edward and Twilight, you know, famous actor. And it's not a, it's not a thing to follow, but it's something that's funny that it happened. So apparently he had an obsessed stalker, and his way of dealing with it was he invited her on a date and was just the most disgusting human being he possibly could be. Just so after that, she did not fucking bother him anymore, <laughs> because because the the image of himself he gave off, she was just disgusted. Like ah oh, ah, oh, what the fuck? So it's a very funny, but you know, obviously you know stalkers are pretty messed up, and you shouldn't really play into it. But it's kind of a hilarious way of how he now it was how he managed to stop someone being obsessed with him by just being a raw bloke like. <laughs> he was just disgusting to her, and it say it it stopped her him from being stalked by her. It's a funny little anecdote. Yeah, just reading through. Uh, I'll just read this one here. Uh, the over familiarity of fans is definitely weird when it comes to names and nicknames and stuff. I also find the whole shipping obsession odd too. I used to live the opposite entrance to Granda. And there were people waiting there all day, every day, when Victoria Lock to come in and out. They literally stand in front of the barriers, blocking the cars, coming out until they stop for pictures. Most would, but some would, and so much is wave and good for them. Liking a show doesn't make you entitled to everyone's time. Um, some, something which predates social media and fairness. In forums and fan boards to join the night, often pair two characters together. Um, it's only recently that the term shipping became widely used. I recall the, the days of the ex files and Mulder and Scully's relationship is mainly referred to MSR. It wasn't as intense as it is today. I know it's been around for a long time, but the intensity of it over the last decade or so has reached ridiculous levels. The way some of the shepherds act and speak to you if you aren't on the board or don't agree is off the scale. Some of them desperately need to get lives of their own instead of living for fictional characters. Balam and Sucky fans. Not at all. Please uh, try not to generalise or group everyone together. There are many non shippers who've enjoyed seeing that particular relationship play out because, as a community, we've never had this kind of detail and accurate representation of a lesbian relationship on mainstream soap before. Most lesbian soap, soap couples are incredibly inaccurate in their portrayal. Sucky and Eve have been different than his appreciation. You only see some more of the insane fans on Twitter here and in the forums. Most of us are just happy and represented in a way. I keep saying this, we're not all on hinge. Some of us appreciate the representation. Down votes, you're getting it now, me too. Prove the point being wrong. Thank you. All right, just. But yeah, um, it's one of those. It's one of those weird little. Obviously, I've they, they did show an article. Um, Would I pull it up? Uh, no, it's just essentially just some of the crude details. I will say, obviously, not everybody is involved. Like, yeah, sure, we can panel it by saying all the like Suki even Balam stands. Obviously, not all of the fucking stands are like this you know there are just people who are just generally invested and want to see where it goes obviously the the loud like exceptions do generally make the rule which is shit 
And it does suck, but at the end of the day, the loudest voice is usually the first ones heard. Um, and it does suck, and it's not to tar everybody with the same brush, but there is a very us versus them kind of uh, approach towards these sort of things, where I like... I've openly said Ben Mitchell was is probably one of my favorite soap characters of all time. Um, but even the fact that I just voiced some slightly not so savory opinions about the recent iteration of the character, we were getting a bunch of hate comments like, oh, you guys just hate Max Bowden. It's like, I fucking don't care about the fucking actor. <laughs> I, just, I care about the writing of the character for fuck's sake. I just quickly want to end this with chipped, like shipping. I. Oh, oh yeah, hold on. Let me just say about this this stalker thing. Um, cast concern. He sent a stalker hell update as fan who refused to leave the set until he kissed stars. This was a stalker at the NTAs, um, and a man was sectioned under the Mental Health Act and refused to leave. This meant that they had to do a lot, uh, a lot more security. Says Matt Assault said he was demanding to kiss members of the cast. Um, the fan visited Elstree a number of times and was trying to blag his way in and was refusing to leave, demanding to kiss some of the female cast. Security called the police. Um, and then they had to get more, they had to get more security. Like, it's a, like I said, obviously this is a big exception, but it's still important to just generally say, just because you like something doesn't mean you get the right to, like, actually voice how do I actually say it in a way that it's important? Just because you like something doesn't give you the reason to act like a fucking creep all the time. Like, just because, like, yeah, sure, you can be a bit obsessive about something, but as long as you don't inflict that fucking obsession on other people and make it other people's problem, like, the, it's not, it's, it's not okay, but if you're not hurting anyone, then it's, you know, what are you going to do? Like, like I was obsessed with the Stalker Sarah Cairns storyline for a while. That was my favorite EastEnders storyline. I loved it. It was a comfort thing. I adored it. I spent countless hours like, I need to find this one episode because I need to see this one bit that I've not seen before. You know, but I also was just doing this internally. I was having a bit of a bad time. <laughs> I was a bit obsessed at a bad time. But also, I wasn't outwardly affecting anybody else. I wasn't, like, fucking going to all the actors, like, fucking, oh, you were really great in this. Do you remember this? Do you really like this storyline that you guys did? It's really good. I, look, I love it too. Like I said, just to reinforce that you need boundaries and you should not be getting involved in people's shit, essentially. They are actors doing a job. Yeah, sure, they probably enjoy the role. They probably enjoy the relationships they're in on the show. But at the end of the day, it's not for you to decide the boundaries. It's just on shipping. I've never really been a big fan of shipping characters. It's I, I, I've, I've respect if you want to do it. Again, it just weirds me out in a way. Like, it weirds me out if, like, you're shipping me and Ash, because that just, that just weirds me out. I don't care if people joke about it, you can. If you just, if you go, like, if we start getting obsessive fans, I'm going to be like, maybe take a step back, because we, as a channel, me and Ash do, like, our boundaries. And I know we're making this about us, but let us just have this for, like, two minutes. <laughs> um, but what I want to round this off with is, again, just like EastEnders, <laughs> I'm saying this and we've got 720 subscribers, but who gives a shit? Respect our boundaries as well. We are only podcast hosts. I'm an idiot who, who jokingly went into Louis. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say this story, but I to say it. I, I don't know if I told you this story, but uh, Louis um, was chatting with a woman, Louis Copeland, and uh, obviously I made some IRA remarks in one of his streams, and Louis Damn. rebuttaled, obviously messing. So the woman found out because she was watching the stream, messaged him and went, Oh, you're an extremist. And he went, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. That goes, that was a joke. That was a joke. And then she's like, oh, I just can't support you. And then he's like, oh, okay, fair enough. And, I'm, and then I continue to make all right jokes. And he's like, stop it now, mate. You're getting a bit too far now. And I'm like, fair enough, yeah. Because like, there's a boundary that you have for respect. If it gets people in trouble, I mean, maybe you should yeah. stop. And that's the same. Like, I do want to meet up with Louie. I do talk about meeting up with Louie. I talk about meeting up with Rose. Hell, even Ash. 
And that's all right because it might happen, it might not. I'm not there shipping like fucking Ash and Louie. Like, um, I'm just yeah. respecting. I'm respecting people's boundaries as you should too. If you and... like, if you like a character, that's good. I've no problem. I've no problem with you liking characters. You can like whatever character you want, whether it's Darth Vader to fucking Muhammad Ali. Um, as long as it's not like a political figure that was evil, that that's a bit weird. Um, just like the character and move on. You can pretty much. You can have fantasies, like, but make them just fantasies, and that's it. I I respect. I I appreciate the desire to get invested in these soap relationships. I understand, and I I'm not saying that thing is inherently bad because fundamentally, look, you know, representation is great. I love representation. I it's an important thing to do. It's an important thing to show on these shows and show that there are people who, you know. <laughs> There aren't people. Not everybody's. Not everybody's straight. Not everybody loves men or women. You know, some people. Some people like men. Some people like women. It doesn't matter. It like, but it's important to show this because if you don't know who you are and you don't know who you want to be, you can look at these examples and find yourself in them. Um, and it's a really, it's a good thing, and I, 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 I love it at at the core. But like I said. It's like with Sookie and Eve. Obviously, Sookie and Eve is kind of viewed as this really good relationship simply because it is a more... I mean, without all the stuff about the domestic abuse of husband and all that shit, but, like, it is a genuine lesbian relationship, and it has kind of slowly built, and it's a slightly older, slightly older women, so it's it's a much sweeter story. They're both at the same stage in their life, and it's a, it's a really lovely story, and it's a something to be proud of you know if you are a lesbian you'd be very proud of this storyline it's a great representation of like it's a very good representation of that sort of relationship but yeah it's uh and it like i said it is important to have these things i genuinely believe that i'm not like, i'm not a guy who hates representation it's pretty important it's great that if you can help someone figure out who they are great it's fantastic um I but like i said there are boundaries <laughs> And you don't need to get a bit too over fucking keen with the actors. They are actors. They're playing a job. It's their fucking job to do this. You wouldn't want to be stopped at the end of your work day, and someone would tell you like, "Oh, I really love you." It's like you don't know me though. Oh yeah, but I really love all all the stuff. It's uh, you know, I, I love I love you and Heather. Oh, you mean you mean me and Eve? You, oh, you mean Sookie and Eve? No, no, I love you. I love you and Heather, or I love you and I love you and Max. It's like. Guys, we have to fucking we have to create some boundaries here because uh, otherwise, it's just insane. And just what I want to end off, and I briefly talked about it on the podcast. Obviously, I, I encountered like I encountered an account of a of a woman who transitioned in obviously to a woman in the eighties, and obviously, you're gonna get some backlash because the world is messed up. But like that showed queer people like yeah, like uh, I'm old and this happened. And then for some reason, so you get comments like this young trans woman going, that's lovely. I I feel more represented. Thank you for this. You know, obviously people going, but God didn't create this way. That's fine. I mean, just people going, did you get your prostate checked? And I'm like, that's a bit more weird to ask than God doesn't believe in this. Like, God doesn't believe in this. Mm. All right. But I joke about it to ask sometimes, but I'm joking with him. Generally, if you're going up to a stranger going, have you got your prostate checked? And it's like, not really your business. It's like going up to like a be like going up to like Heather or Eve being like, Did you check a period? It's like, mate, you don't know me. Leave me alone. You know, because that's one step away from getting a fucking uh what's it called? A fucking you know in court where you go to where you can get something to appeal that they have to defy them. You can't be in a hundred meters of them. Uh res- restraining order. Yeah, restraining order. That's one step away from a restraining order like but again, I hope we like we're informative. Sorry, it's long. We just have a lot to say on this topic because we 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 both understand both sides. Of it. Well, at least I do. Where it's fun to have. Wrestling. I mean, as someone who I have been a streamer for like multiple years, and I have had some people who are a bit too fucking overly familiar. Like I've had I have had to deal not you have had to deal with this in like in different ways, and it, it can it can lead to a lot of really uncomfortable fucking like. You know, some people do get a bit too overly invested. But, like, 
who are you to just be like, uh, sorry, you this is fucked. Like, it's a really hard situation to fucking do because, like, some you only know that version. You only know the version that they've put out. <laughs> so you just you're clinging to all this all this stuff, and it's just it's not even like like there are bits of your life you don't show and some of that makes you the most like yourself and like other people think they know you when they really don't it's a it's a really weird it's a really weird fucking situation it's like when i met ash's mom by accident like i'm not sitting down talking to her surely if there comes a state where ash is gets on well or something then i need to talk for her what are you planning to do but like i just left yeah. her alone because i'm like i don't know you like yeah, I went in to try and say hello to his brother, but I'm only saying hello. I'm not going up to him, sitting down beside him, going, "What are you playing there, brother?" Like I'm not doing that because I don't know them. I'm only there to see Ash, and yeah. possibly Jack, his friend. Like I'm not sitting. I'm not going into his brother's room, the hair dryer, like going, "I'll hair dryer that. Don't you fucking worry." You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my boundary away from them, just like his brothers would keep his boundary away from me. Although the funny story is, apparently Ash told me his brother tried to make a conversation with me and I'm just sat there eating the food, <laughs> which was funny. Um, but yeah, just respect people's boundaries. It's great to have representation. But remember, everything that you love will have a consequence, no matter what, like when you become a celebrity. Because there's going to be some idiot, like some idiot going, your thoughts on Trump versus Kamala. And it's like, may I act in, I, I act in Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. Why are you acting there? Why are you asking me this? <laughs> Is the problem you get when you become somewhat semi-famous? Or you just turn out to be an obsessive creep like the fucking writer or Father Ted and IT crowd where it's like, these bloody trans people, fucking trans people. And his wife's like, okay, I'm leaving you. Oh. Yeah. These trans people, though. And it's like, you're clearly missing the point, lad. <laughs> this is all. Uh, there, there it is. You love your 36-minute video. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry it was a bit long. But we just wanted to give our thoughts on it. And if you want to hear more of this, we can clearly do a follow-up if any more of this comes out, but I don't know what else we could add to it, apart from Yeah, our we own have kind of done it all. Um, but yeah. Um, and I suppose if you don't want more of these rambly, rambly, rambly sorts of videos, obviously we're streaming it all live on Twitch. If you want to go over to twitch.tv forward slash watching Wilford, if you watch all the videos this week, you'll be fucking furious at it. But like I said, it's a way to get a slightly more unfiltered version of us while still getting the same content and you can just you can skip the fucking week you don't need to watch any of the youtube videos if you're just there watching us live on twitch giving us someone to respond to so thank you for watching make sure to join us in the next one see you then bye bye